Welcome to Katherine Raker's World. Innovation. Culture. Adventure. Fashion and health. Artists. Destinations. Traditions. This is Catherine Raker's World. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of Catherine Raker's World, the chef you and I, and let's just talk. Today, our guest is Chef Diana Anderson with, she's going to do some cooking with us. She's a chili queen of Texas, and her company is JD's Chili Parlor, and she's one of my sponsors. Welcome to our show, Diana. How are you? Hey, thanks so much. I'm doing great, Catherine. I hear it's cold out in your neck of the woods. Uh, yeah, it <laughs> is, and we have four inches of snow, not a dusting. So let's let's get started. What are you going to do today? And then we're going to watch you cook and talk to you while you're on camera. Well, I'm so excited to be here today. Of course, I thought I'd make my traditional chili. You know, I really honored the chili queens of San Antonio because those women came out in their wagons with their families for over 200 years, and they made chili right on Market Square and everyone was welcome to a chili queen's table. They made the most amazing chilies, and as a matter of fact, they really are the mothers of Tex-Mex. So oh. they're just a, you know, their story is so, so touched me that I understood at a certain point after about three years of research that I was living the same life. My family and I went out in, in uh, New Braunfels, Texas, and we sold red wine blackberry chilies pecan smoked whiskey chilies, all kinds of great, crazy chilies. And um, we love carrying on the tradition of those great women. And of course, the state dish of Texas is chili. So today I'm making my original. And Kevin, this is an all natural product. So there's no preservatives. I'm just using apple cider vinegar, local honey from my really dear friend, Todd Youngblood, who just has a great honey ranch. And then our big five pepper signature blend. And that blend is really what makes this chili. Turns out, Catherine, to make a great chili, you have to have great chili peppers. <laughs> that, that's for sure. You do have to have great chili peppers. So, <laughs> what do you, so what do you, now you're going to show me the chilies, right? I am. So I brought just a few today for y'all to see. So this is an ancho chili. And I'm gonna to try to bring it here a little bit closer. It looks like a big it. rain. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. That's a dry it's, chili, though. That's what it's a dry like? chili. And originally, of course, in its fresh state, it's called a pavano pepper. Oh yeah, and I so, use you know, I use pavano peppers all the time, and they're green. I, they're nice and mild. Well, once they dry in the sun. They take on a sweetness and a richness and a real earthy, earthy kind of, um, kind of, I don't know, it's just a real earthy flavor. And I love that deepness of the ancho pepper. So that's one of my stars of the show. I definitely put that one in there. And then here's another pepper. This is the New Mexico pepper. And, you know, just a great all balanced pepper. It's got a little bit more heat. You know, the poblano is pretty mild. And, New Mexico is bringing in some, a nice little bit of heat there. And then um, I love the Wahia. This is a, a, you know, a little bit brighter pepper. Definitely going to have a little bit more heat. It's going to bring um, just a little fruitiness to it. And so I love that pepper. And um, I also, of course, do the day or a bowl. This one's going to kick. This little guy right here. It's going to kick you, baby. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't put too much of this in. <laughs> not. So these dried peppers, of course, um, were the base of what we did. We hand, uh, you know, made these beautiful chili paste. And um, we first got, really got started. And from that paste, we, you know, ran that through our whole line. So 
just beautiful chili pepper. And then of course, a big Comino Mexican oregano, uh, black pepper, paprika, spice profile that rounds out that total chili. So we did all the work for you. It took us nine years to get to this point. This is the best chili right now in Texas. And I think it's the best chili in America. Oh, I think so too. So what did you, what are you cooking over there on your immersion heater? So I just got um, a little bit of ground that I've already um, browned. And I'm using a 9010 hair sirloin. I love to shake my uh, rancher's hand. So Be Healthy Meats, a longhorn company that I've been at the farmer's market with for so many years. Um, I wanted to celebrate him today because his family raises just beautiful longhorn down in Pearsall, Texas. And we also get our prickly pear juice from there. So their meat is going to be a little bit sweeter maybe than um, your just normal ground. But any great 9010 will do. Of course, grass-fed is the way to go if you can. The better your meat in a chili, the better your chili is going to be. Now, what, are you, gonna really do, what are you going to do next to it? So, uh, I, you know, I kind of left off onions and garlic. I know that, you know, some folks have an allergy. I know you do to garlic, so I'm leaving that part off. A lot of times I'll saute, and you can do whatever saute you want in here. Today I just left it off because really all those spices are already in our chili. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start again with the original today. And you're just going to pop off the lid. I've already got this beef really nicely. Diana, Diana, I have a question to ask you. Do you have to have the blender right in front of you? Oh, no, no, not at all. Here, I would, I'm getting ready to make a cream of hair in a minute, but let me just finish it. And so I just put that whole jar in there. And this is a pound and a half of meat here, Catherine. And okay. it's going to make chili for a family of four. So this little jar packs a big punch. Um, it's a concentrated sauce. You're going to want to add, I've already measured this out, a half a cup of water. And then just put your lid back on. Give it a good old shake here. Get all that yummy goodness out and then pour in the rest of that moisture. And now all you do is simmer uncover for about 15 minutes. Okay. And those flavors are gonna really start to meld in there. You just wanna do a low simmer is all you really need to do. Okay. And just incorporate your meat in there. Now, some people use two pounds. If you wanna stretch this out, the chili will definitely take it. It's big, big flavor here, so. Um, you can stretch it if you want to. Some people just use a pound because they want it to be a little more soupy. So that's kind of up to you, but I um, suggest a pound and a half. So I'm getting it all worked in here. Let it really uh, just move around here. Mm -hmm. Let that simmer. So that's gonna simmer, you know, like I said, for about 15 minutes and then you're good to go. So you have an incredible healthy meal for a family of four, the most flavorful chili right now that you could ever have, all natural. And you can serve it in so many ways. And that's what I'm gonna do next, is really show you all the terrific ways that we can use chili. Okay, so do that for me, would you? Sure, um, I was gonna make a crema though. Can I make the crema now? Yes, you can do that. Okay. Yeah, let me do that next. That way we can get the blender out of the way. Right. So you're making a crema. I'm going to come back on the screen for a minute. Um, you're going to make a crema out of what, Diana? Um, hang on just a second. Let me grab my salt. Um, it's sour cream. You could use yogurt. It's two limes and uh, two avocados mm -hmm. and two jalapenos is what I'm doing right now. Okay. Go right ahead. Right. So when I'm thinking chili, I'm always wanting to come up with different cremas. I love to do a habanero honey crema. Sometimes I'll do a wahia crema. Today I'm doing a standard crema that's my go-to. At all the events I do, all over town, all over Texas, I bring an avocado, lime, jalapeno crema. And it is just so divine. It's just a great counterpoint to the chili. And so it's super easy to make. I'm just doing a, a whole pint here of uh, sour cream. And you can use yogurt just as well. That's sour cream light that I'm using. And um, then two avocados. 
this is going to give it just some really richness and super creaminess. And then I like a lot of lime, so I'm going to kind of guess here oats a lot. So maybe two tablespoons or something like that. And then just to taste a little pink Himalayan sea salt. And while I'm doing that, just remember I've got chili cooking. So you do want to stir your chili around a little bit uh, in the simmer. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's starting to look great. It's starting to smell great. It's going to just fill your whole kitchen with great essence of chili. Okay. All right, so now I'm doing jalapenos. Now I'm going to do this and you can count. You want a whole one? You want two? Uh, what do you think, Catherine? I don't know. You're eating it right now, so I'm not. <laughs> My husband's eating it, which means I'm going with two whole avocado. I mean, two whole jalapenos. Wow, wow. Because he's a hothead. I'm the sweet. And he's the heat. Absolutely every day of the week. <laughs> okay. So you're going to blend so, that, right? We're going to blend this now. We're going to blend this until it gets nice and smooth. We'll cut out the noise. Go ahead and blend it. Go ahead and blend it. Right. And then you can just pour out into any bowl. You know, it's easy to um, just spoon this on whatever it is that you want to uh, spoon it onto. And it is just so good. You're going to love that avocado crema. And next, it looks like our chili's going great, Catherine. Looks like it's got a nice simmer on it. Again, you know, it's important just to stir it every minute or so just to make sure you got it so it's nice and all that chili goodness has moved all the way through the meat. Mm -hmm. And I've got this going. So what I really wanted to talk to you about now is how and what it is that we can plate with chili. So this chili's just about ready to go, but I made a big crock of chili that I've been crocking for two days with longhorn and some sausage. That's another way, Catherine, that you can enjoy my chili. You can ground three pounds of meat instead of this pound and a half, put it in a crock pot and put, you know, two of my JD's chili jars in. Oh my gosh, it's so great. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my bowls here real quick. Let's see what I do. And here's my longhorn back here. Oh, it is so tender. The longer you let this chili cook, the more tender the meat is going to be. And also it's going to take away a little bit of the heat. So this is a classic bowl of red that I'm serving here. And I'm just going to garnish it today with just a little bit of cheese. I like fresh onion, but you know, you can play around with what it is that you like. This is traditional pretty much toppings. And then I like bread and butter jalapenos here. Adds a little bit of sweetness to the dish. And then I'm going to top with just a little bit of my crema, Catherine, for that gorgeous crema. bowl of red. Your crema, right? Look at that. That's just a really, really beautiful bowl of red there. And yeah. uh, then That's the right. second dish that you can make with a chili that's just super easy that I already have prepped for you guys is, of course, a Frigo pie. So I can go down with just a couple ladles of butter. Uh, chili on top of Fritos and you know it's a funny story because I can tell you when I met people from all over the world as the chili queen of Texas I met so many people that didn't know what a Frito pie was so this is sort of the staple of for me it was going to baseball games and watching my brother play baseball or going to the rodeo I always had a Frito pie so it's just Fritos going down and then our great JD's original chili and then on top of that again you can get real traditional with this. Just cheese, a little bit of onion, and then I'm gonna do just some jalapeno on the side. And to fancy it up, again, just a little bit of that crema on top. How would you like to garnish with some cilantro? That just makes the dish look beautiful. And so, you know, I wouldn't be serving chili without serving Texas steak dish chili and then my favorite dish a frito pie and that is just a gorgeous way to serve it good hearty healthy chili and um then 
you know, what else can you do with chili, Catherine? There's so many yeah. different things. And on that note, we have to take a short break for our sponsors, like, of course, JD's Chili Parlor. So we'll be right back after these messages. Where can people go and see your shows and also go see your website? So give your website, please. So you can go to jdschiliparlor.com. All of our products are there, lots of different videos that we've done. And then we're streaming um, on Samuel TV as well. Okay, so we'll be right back after these important messages on Catherine Rickers World, the chef you and I, and let's just talk. We'll be right back. We are back on Let's just talk the chef you and I in Catherine Rickers world with one of my best chili queens. She's the chili queen of Texas. And her name is Diana Anderson. And JD's Chili Parlor is the name of her company. And she and her husband started it. And they travel all over and they can you can get their products online plus in many, many stores. So tell us what you're doing next, if you don't mind. Diana? Oh, you bet. Well, you know, my husband is from the North. I, I married a Yankee. I hope that's okay to tell everyone. <laughs> I'm a Yankee. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, you <laughs> forgot, right. Anyway, um, no, he, he is from Minnesota, and he loves stews. So, you know, during COVID, I can't tell you how many arm roasts and all different kinds of, of uh, stews I made for the boys. And at one point I was like, well, why am I not putting my JD's original or my red wine blackberry in and just making a regular stew, just like you would a pot roast, but instead of the water, add in my chili fixings. And so I did it and it, it's a chillified pot roast, Catherine. And um, what I do with it, I just take, I, I brought my uh, crock full, I made this yesterday, it's been, cooking for about 12 hours or something like that mm -hmm. so i'm just going to go in and this is grass-fed beautiful pasture-raised chuck that i'm using and just carrots onions and little baby tomatoes i'm sorry little uh, baby potatoes and so i just do a ramekin about halfway full and what i'm doing is a little baby shepherd's pie so then i'm just going in with a little bit of mashed potato and then right over here just again you know add in some some cheese and then you just bake that off and look how cute this is just a little that's baby beautiful pie with, so cute and it's so delicious it's just a great way to kind of spice your life up again you know you can do only so much with a pot roast and then it's like wow if you're a chili queen Let's just chillify it. And it just turns out delicious. Especially, I love this one with my red wine, blackberry, um, chili fixings. That just goes great with beef. It's fantastic. So that's another great dish that you can do with chili. And now I thought I would make a vegan chili for all the vegans out there. Of course, Kevin, you can make my chilies with turkey or chicken or beef. You know, take your pick, or of course, you can use a pound and a half of vegetables. And my um, chili fixings are vegetarian, so you can have a terrific dish that's all vegan. So, what I've done is roast a ton of vegetables, and I've done that in a really nice olive oil or avocado oil, Catherine, and then. I'm just gonna tell you the veggies that I did in here. You can really just decide on your own. I really like broccoli and cauliflower because it gives it that great texture that you want for a chili, right? So I start off with that and then usually I'm adding butternut squash, like a half a butternut squash. Mm -hmm. And I let all that, uh, that stuff roast. I'm doing, um, of course, poblanos in here, mushrooms, carrots, it's just a big cacophony of vegetables. And, you know, you, to make it hotter, you could do serrano if you wanted to, Catherine, bring some heat to it. Um, if you wanted to, you could add hatch pepper. This would be a great dish 
for hatch pepper too. So use your imagination. I usually build it around the cauliflower, broccoli, carrots, and mushrooms. And then I have done turnips and beets and Brussels sprouts. So I made this one that's got 14 vegetables in it and it is outrageous, but I'm just using five or six here. And all you do is rush it off 375 for, um, let's see, about 25 minutes. The butternut squash is gonna be a little bit longer than that. And this is an easy way to do this because, you know, instead of sauteing, what, what the roasted vegetables do, Catherine, is really make it all a little bit sweeter. And you get to use all those great juices with the avocado oil. I don't throw any of that away. So I'm using um, avocado here too. I'm just gonna pour the veggies in after my oil gets a little bit hot. Oh, yeah, it's almost like a stir fry, wouldn't you say? So this is, um, yeah, it's kind of like I'm stir frying back into it. And you may need to add just a little bit more olive or avocado oil here. Just to make sure you get enough to coat the veggies. That's all I'm doing. Look at all those pretty colors. Mm -hmm. And I have so many vegan friends that just love this dish. And I serve this in stuffed peppers sometimes. It's great that way. I use this chili um, to make enchiladas, burritos. I mean, anything that we do with a traditional meat chili, you can do with a vegan chili. And it's just a super, super healthy dish. Um, so what do you say we pop open the red wine blackberry chili fixings here? Okay, go right ahead. All right. So I love, um, I love this combination. The Merlot is fantastic. This makes it a little fancier dish. It now becomes a little bit of a French fusion. So I'm loving to play around with, you know, different styles of cuisine and incorporate chili with that cuisine. Uh, about a half a cup of water too, you're gonna add back into it. And this is always, you know, you can make it a little more soupy or less soupy. That's up to you. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, I mean, some people like a looser chili. Some people like a, with a vegan, I tend to not add as much water because sometimes you get quite a bit of juice, you know, with the vegetables. But look at that. That looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. Now, how long do you cook that for, Diana? Same thing. It's just going to be uh, uncovered, 15 minutes. And y'all, this vegan chili is just up. Oh, I can smell that red wine in there right now going. It is, yeah, just about 15 minutes and it's gonna be ready to plate and ready to go. And, you know, I could take you through some of, you could do exactly the same way I did it. You could have a traditional bowl of red like we did with our beautiful first dish. So you can just make a vegan bowl of red, no problem. Or you can make a vegan chili pie. At festivals, I used to do something called a half and half. So half vegan and half meat. Uh, Frigo pies, which are kind of fun to make, or um, you could definitely make, uh, you know, the shepherd's pie and make it a vegan dish as well. But with the um, vegan dish that we're doing now, one of my favorite ways to serve it is over um, a fusilli. So just a little bit of beautiful pasta. And this pasta I get from my friends at the New Braunfels Farmers Market. It's a Texas pasta company and they use Durham flour. It's just a really high quality product. And with this vegan dish, I think it's gonna be great. So this could go a little bit longer, but I'm just about ready to plate this. So that would be a good idea. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. There we go. And then, you know, you can sort of play around with what um, cheeses to put on there. Some people may want to use some Parmigiano. Monterey Jack would be good. This is a five pepper Mexican cheese here that's got everything from Indero to, you know, queso fresca, a lot of different Mexican cheeses here. But you can really play around with this dish. You could, you know, make it a little bit more Italian if you want. And you can certainly add basil to this dish and a little bit more tomato and make it really more toward an Italian dish. So that's one of the cool things about working with chili that I love so much, Catherine. The sky's really the limit. 
you can cook with chili and use my chili sauces in so many different cuisines. Mm. Everything from traditional American cuisines, French cuisine. I love to do, I was going to make a spaghetti for you tonight, but I think we're running out of time. But you could certainly do a Cincinnati style chili, uh, a two, you know, uh, two ways. And you know, and you know, Cincinnati chili, uh, I have to tell you, is not made like it's a Greek chili. Oh yeah, it's a kind it of a brown. It's a kind of a brown chili, and uh, it is hot. You can make it even hotter. And uh, the Greeks have been making it a long time. It's a very thin chili that takes a long time to cook to make it really the way it should be. So, um, you know, and a lot of people don't understand that in Texas, you don't put tomato sauce in your chili. Am I correct? Well, it, not, not a true bowl of red. Yeah, a true bowl of red is suet, pepper, onion, some early uh, cultures, of course, use garlic too. And then, you know, whatever meat they had. I mean, the early um, folks that were here, they probably used goat or rabbit or you know, whatever they could find. <laughs> and or, they could, or could they could hunt, you mean, right? <laughs> right, or they, deer chilies were really popular early on. And then of course, when the cattle trails came through San Antonio, that's when the cowboys started hanging out with the chili queens and planting peppers all up and down that cowboy trail. And that's where chili bricks were born. And so there's just been, chili has kind of been the crossroads of culture and it definitely is a celebration of my hometown, San Antonio here. Um, and it's a celebration of those early chili queens that went out to, with their families and just did a beautiful thing, make, making just a gorgeous, one of the first fusion dishes of America. And uh, it's just a joy to be able to bring all these chilies today. And you can find my products, like I said, on jdschiliparlor.com. We've got nine different chilies, nine different enchilada sauces, and also a Bloody Mary mixer called it Chili Mary. So it's been super fun, Catherine. And thank you so much for joining me today on Catherine Raker's World. Let's just talk radio and the chef you and I. Thank you so much, Diana, for what you did today and i know that you had a very very busy day doing it and thanks again oh it's so fun thank y'all so much and thank you we'll see you soon uh see we'll you see soon. you next time on katherine raker's world the chef you and i and let's just talk see you soon